Hello my beautiful people, welcome to Mimsy Vids. Today I want to talk about something that has been excruciating to watch, but at the same time really inspiring and I'm so so proud of this person. And that is of course Rahaf, Rahaf Muhammad al Qunun. Uh, what an amazing, amazing woman she is. So if anyone doesn't know, I'll just give you a quick overview. She's an 18 year old girl from Saudi Arabia. She's she's had a very, very difficult and abusive and, and oppressive family and obviously within a very oppressive state like Saudi Arabia, she has really, really struggled. And on top of that, have told her family that she no longer believes in Islam, that she's an ex-Muslim, she's left Islam, an apostate, whatever you wanna call it. And that of course, in an Islamic government is a death penalty. And this amazing woman took an opportunity when her family traveled to Kuwait on holiday because in Kuwait, they have slightly different restrictions on women traveling. Whereas in Saudi, she wouldn't have been able to travel out of the country on her own without a mahram, which is basically a male relative of yours or a, ma ma a male person responsible for the female. Um, so annoying. Oh God, anyways, so basically in Kuwait, they do allow women to travel on their own, luckily. So her plan was to find refuge uh, and asylum in Australia. So she traveled from Kuwait to Thailand and there was going to be a flight from Thailand to Australia. But once she got to Thailand, her family discovered obviously she'd kind of run away. Uh, they knew where she was. The Saudi and Kuwaiti officials got involved. They obviously notified the Thailand officials who didn't let her into the country. So she ended up being locked up in a hotel room in Thailand. There was also at some point where the kind of Saudi Kuwaiti officials had taken her passport off her. They had a specific flight kind of planned for her to get on and get back to Kuwait and you know, she was to be deported. So what she did is barricaded herself in the hotel and tweeted all the information, her story out onto social media. And I'm just like, oh my God, thank goodness for social media because this is what really put her on that platform and what brought a huge awareness. You know, people were going crazy all over Twitter saying something needs to be done, the UN needs to get involved. And she was refusing to leave the room until someone came to meet her and which eventually now has happened, which is such great news. You know, all these kind of Muslim countries that claim they're a religion of peace and tolerance and a religion of harmony, and this is what they stand for. You didn't see any of them coming in and saying, you know what, we'll take you in. This is terrible. This is terrible that someone wants to kill you just because you have different beliefs. You're an 18 year old girl. You've been abused by your family we'll make sure that you're okay. It's the non-Muslims that step in and say, this is ridiculous. Rahaf luckily has got an asylum in Canada. We're so grateful for that and so, so happy that that's happened. But there are many, many, many others that we don't know the names of, that we don't know about, that this happens so often. They're swept under the rug and many are killed. Dina Ali Laslum is another one actually in April last year. She did a very, very similar thing which we heard about. As I said, there's so many that we haven't heard about. And so she basically took uh, the same sort of flight to uh, from Kuwait, I believe, to, to the Philippines, and then was planning from the Philippines to get to Australia. And in the Philippines, the kind of Saudis and Kuwaitis got involved and brought her back basically to Saudi Arabia. And we've not heard anything from her since then, uh, which is so, so devastating. And that's why what Rahaf did is so amazing. And she got the asylum in Canada. She got the help. She got the point out there of this is what happens to people like me. And I'm so proud of her for doing that. These countries that carry out the Islamic Sharia practices in this way, where, where apostates are killed, where there's inequality between men and women. You know, this idea that Islamically, men are given an authority over women and men are the mahrams over women. And women shouldn't really be doing certain things without the man's permission. The Islamic understanding that women's intelligence is less than a man. These ideas that stem from the Islamic ideology need to be challenged and need to be looked at because then change won't happen. If these countries are relying on God's word and God's message and that these ways of life are perfect and unchangeable, then change won't happen. Reform needs to happen in these countries, in these governments and in that understanding of their religion. And why are we still supporting these barbaric countries? Why are we still 
working alongside these barbaric countries, the Western world also needs to not brush it under the carpet as well and be motivated so much by money and just ignore all these things that are happening. There are, you know, many feminists that have just kind of written articles that are imprisoned and tortured. How can we stand by? We need to speak out and I'm so proud of Raha and also her friend. I know that she had a friend who did a very similar thing and was kind of supporting her and tweeting from her account. And I know there are many others that are activists and working towards this change in these Muslim countries. And we all just need to come together and bring awareness to what is really happening and not let it be swept under the carpet. So I just wanted to get that out there. Thank you guys for watching. So much love to Rahaf and her friends and many others. If you're watching and you're in this position, let's just hope that change happens. Sending you guys so much love and see you soon.